Now we're going to talk about a ten trillion trillion dollar wealth transfer set to happen in the next ten to fifteen years, which sounds like a lot of money until you realize that the federal government has a thirty four, soon to be thirty five trillion dollar federal debt. But ten trillion is still nothing to laugh at. And with us is Michael Rubin. He's a baby boomer a baby boomer expert, so that's that's me, I'm a baby boomer. And um he is um I got a website, I think it's is it sell my company now, uh, Michael? Is that the Yeah Yes sir, yes sir. Yep. www.sellmycompanynow.com. All, right. www All right. Well that's um that that certainly I'm sure is a is a good business. You were recently in Boston, I see. My my producer you stayed at the Liberty Hotel. I had a lot of uh, friends who stayed at the Liberty Hotel when it was the Charles Street Jail. Did you actually sleep in one of the old jail cells? Actually, I stayed at the Langham, which I was told was a jail or a prison. Is no, that true? A no, five-star no, hotel no. called who the told Langham. You that? No. Is that is that not true? No, it, no, I don't think so. Not the Langham. The Langham's right huh. down well, in. Well, it was uh, nice. In, in, that's right down in Post Office Square, I think, right? Well, my wife and I started in Nantucket. Remember when that hurricane happened last year? We were at the tail end of it. We flew to Boston, and I had more lobster rolls than you can imagine. I loved it. I loved it. Went down to the harbor and had a bunch of lobster rolls. It was great. an accent and everything like that. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about millennials. Um, so those are the children of the baby boomers. Uh, and I'm a baby boomer. Ah, uh, ten trillion dollars. So that's a lot of money uh, that's going to be transferred through estate taxes, I guess. Um, what what sort of a windfall that is is that for the federal government in terms of? Um, um, a well, you know taxes? what I do is I represent baby boomers like yourself here in Texas, and I sell their companies for maximum value. So I meet one or two baby boomers and hear their story each and every week here at our firm called MDR and Associates. And I can tell you, the 77 million baby boomers are my heroes. I, I think you mentioned the number, $10 trillion of company value is going to transfer. And some of those children are going to get it, but most will not because that baby boomer is going to actually sell their company with a firm like ours, run an M&A process, and some buyer is going to end up buying it. Most millennials, it, it, it's crazy. This is going to sound crazy. Most millennials don't want their dad or mom's business, their baby, but their 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 father or their mother's business that that they built over thirty, forty, fifty years. That doesn't surprise me, and and, and I'll tell you why. I I think it's I, my parents did not have a business. I would have loved to have inherited a business. Oh, me too. But but don't you think that there's a lot of young you know millennials who heard uh, nothing about. Everything about the business, and and probably at the dinner table they talk about how tough, uh, you know, establishing and then building a business is. And I'm I'm sure mm -hmm. that they heard a lot of, you know, complaints. And they probably said, you know, my parents are working really hard, but I, I I'm not looking to do that. So the business gets sold, and the millennials get to get some cash, right? Well, eventually, when their parents pass away, and the, yeah, maybe ten, fifteen years later, they're going to get all the cash. So that, right. there, there's a real story there, definitely yeah. a real story. But I, you know, I'm just amazed how the millennials don't want to take over that 40-year HVAC company that Dad built since 1980. It just it floors me sometimes. And so they, the, the baby boomers in front of me saying, "Listen, I need to take some chips off the table and, and cash in my largest asset." But typically, it's their largest asset. Right, so, 70, 80, 90% of their net worth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So are the millennials, do they feel that they're going to go on to, a, you know, many of the businesses, obviously, pretty hard work. You know, mom, mom or dad worked on the, the, the business 16 hours a day, six days a week. I mean, when you own your own business, they say the last person in the business who gets a paycheck at the end of the week is you. <laughs> and, well, yeah. That's true for some businesses. That's right. There's no net income left, but... You know, we, we, we tell those business owners to get back to work after COVID and rebuild it so that we no, can no, show some that, financials. Where the that, net, that, yeah. Well, I think that we as a nation undervalue the work of men and women who decide, to, you know, you know, a lot of people go to work for the state. A lot of people go to work for the federal mm -hmm. government. A lot of people go to work for the city. I get all of that. A lot of people. But whether you're building a law practice or you're building an HVAC company, 
you got to put in the hours, and it's tough. Absolutely. And I'm just wondering if the millennials have seen that, have experienced that. Dad couldn't be around for the Little League games when they wanted to. Right. I, you know, I'm just saying, I think this is an American story, and I, I, I do. I'm not surprised I, I do by too. it. You, you, you probably I, understand that a heck of a lot better than me. I, I do, too. I've met with over 3,000 baby boomers. They told me their story, and what's amazing is they're my heroes. They put all the money in the middle of the table way back when. That's right. They missed some, some soccer games, some baseball games, and they built a business that supports basically keeps the economy going, whether they have three, 30, 300 employees. And guess what? Through COVID, it was all disrupted. So we're finding through COVID right now, after COVID, 22, 23, M&A activity is through the roof. Baby boomers are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They, they're, they're ready to, they're, they're, they've kind of had enough and they're ready to take their chips off the table. Yeah, M&A, M&A mergers and acquisitions. Uh, right. I forget which president it was. It might have been Hoover, actually, who said the business of America is business. That's and, right. And, small and business. That's, that's small, and it's small business too. I mean, we we, yeah. we hear about yeah. uh, the 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 overnight success stories, the Apples and Facebooks. By the way, I spent most of my day to, trying to get back on Facebook today. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I heard it was down. Oh, yeah, I heard it was down today. And, and now, when, <laughs> let me tell you something. I could, I could get a top secret clearance from the CIA easier than you can. That you think I'm kidding? You back on Facebook? You know, we're going to have, a, you know, double identification, two factor, four factor, twenty seven right. factor identification. Uh, and you know, send up, send us a blood sample. Just, you know, it's like to prove who you are. I mean, yeah. you can upload your blood sample. Sure, I can. Right? <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. So yeah, the people that that, as you say, are have you know. Again, I, I'm going to use the word blue collar, but there's nothing wrong with a blue collar business. No, not at all. Most my of our companies are the people, that we sell are blue collar. Yeah, my heroes are not the guys in, in the in the pin pinstripe suits with the ties. <laughs> I'm serious because you know when when your when your your plumbing goes out, don't call a lawyer. <laughs> no, That's don't right. call a heart surgeon. You got you got to call a plumber. Or when the heat goes off. Um, those those are the people who make the country run. And um... that's correct. Yeah, that's great. You know, we're we're a firm. M- my firm is MDR and Associates. We've sold 19 plumbing and HVAC and electrical companies in the last two years. So we know all about service companies. That blue collar service company that's just grown it up. They don't know how to maximize the value. They certainly don't know how to create a competitive landscape. Go you know go go to all the buyer and, and if it's big enough, if it's over a two million three million net, it's only going to go to private equity. And after COVID, they, private equity has trillions of dollars to spend. There's a lot of money on the sidelines right now. So it's a great time for baby boomers to get a valuation, get, get a valuation, and, and consider selling their business for maximum value. Or do, you, do you work with lawyers down there to make sure they get some good tax advice as well? 100% at the end of every transaction. We have hand-selected Steve Clemens, our lawyer, that represents them to dot the I's and cross the T's. Lawyers are the, I hate to say this, forgive me, Steve, and all the lawyers out there, the fastest way to kill a deal is the wrong lawyer. Yeah, by the way, I'm a lawyer, so um, you, you don't say anything bad about lawyers. But, <laughs> okay. I that's the other I thing. It's like everybody, said, everybody hates said, a yep. lawyer until they find that somehow their kid's been well, busted for Well, let me clarify. Marijuana. Let me okay? clarify it. Let, let, yeah, let me clarify. <laughs> Go ahead. My, I'm giving in, you a hard time. Let Go me ahead. clarify. In, in my new book, Sell Your Company for Maximum Value, I wrote this summer, I think it's Chapter 10 or 11 is, is lawyers deal makers or deal breakers. Sure. Trust me, I have a deal making lawyer that I respect to the ends of the earth. It's the deal breaking lawyers that are just interested in their hourly where they get paid and nobody else does when that transaction goes south. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I hear you. So if there are, so do you sell businesses around the country of people in New England? You, we're, we, we're here in about 38 states right now, just so you know. We're thinking about going nationwide, but right now it's Texas. You know, we, I, 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 I operate in the great nation of Texas, right? Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin. Sure. And we sold over 225 businesses in the last 15 years. But we're, we're thinking about going nationwide because today I, I started, I, we just recorded our first radio show here in Dallas called sell your Co- company for maximum value on wbap here in dallas so yeah i'm thinking about nationwide but not quite yet yeah well not I've been quite doing yet. this radio and tv 
TV business for a long time. It's not a bad. It's not a bad gig. Thirty-one years in TV, seventeen now in radio. So congratulations. That's fantastic. I would, uh, I would highly recommend it if you, if you can work through the days and get past all the problems and the roadblocks that Facebook throws. In. <laughs> right. Right. You know, I got to tell you, I can't wait the day that I retire. I'm getting rid of all my Facebook accounts, all my Twitter accounts, my Instagram accounts. Everything is going away. It's as simple like that. I'm going to get, I have my newspaper in the morning, and that's all I'll need. <laughs> simple as that. Hey, yeah, I really enjoyed stop. our conversation, you want, Michael. You're a good sport. You bet. You're a good sport. You bet. You bet. You're a great guy. Hey, great, great, great. Having, uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's been, been Next fantastic. time you're in Boston, thank give you. us a yell, okay? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll take you to a good restaurant. Will do, will do. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so Thanks, much. Mike.